Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to my channel and I am Deb Chanel and you're at Deb Chanel Sportheads World. Okay, we're going to be going over the Real Housewives of Atlanta that aired tonight, Sunday, January 19th, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, my time zone. And it was titled Season 12, Episode 12, A Harry Situation. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it was a Harry situation, especially the part with Dennis McKinley allegedly wanting just Portia family around him so he can pretty much tell them he was sorry for all his actions and this, that, and the third. And when it came to play it all out, honey, didn't they say it called his mama Gina to join them for the festivities because he knew those three ladies was going to get in his behind and he wasn't going to have no which way to go because they were going to get a hold to him and shake him up and have him going every which way but loose, okay? You know that's my favorite word. Shaka, 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 shaka. Pop, 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 pop. Rah, 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 rah. You know, all on him. And he thought that he was going to sit there and take all that stuff. Nah, he said he sending in reinforcements. He sent his mama a message or called her. I don't know how he did it, but honey, she showed up right on time. And everybody was like floored. Like, oh, Lord, we got to tackle her too. We just want to pounce on Dennis for all of his misdeeds and his misdoings and stuff. We were going to really let him have it. Now we got to be kosher. Now we got we can't really be on his behind like we want to because we know his mama got some kickback too. But mama was pretty, um, what do you call it, pleasant in a sense. Unless they just edited all that out and they just gave us the best part of the little meet and greet that they were having that day. But let's get on to the actual start of the show and then we'll finally get into that episode. Because that pretty much was the piece de resistance that really had me going. I'm like, Porsche, I don't even know why you trying to have this man up here. He don't bit more care about what he doing. Because after this little part was taped, uh, taped. Uh, prior to what we're knowing now that's going on in social media, you know, in the current, Dennis done been out again with four different women in the wee hours of the morning time when he should have been scrawled, sprawled up against you and um, baby and PJ in bed somewhere. But he out there living his best life with four gorgeous women, I heard. Okay, at some diner. All right. But anyway, we're going to go into that first section. It's, uh, it's opening up with Eva, relaxing at home, having Marley kind of, you know, tend to her as well as her husband, Michael. And she's sitting there telling Michael the comes and goings of what's been happening between all the ladies and her interactions with them since coming back from Toronto, Canada. Okay, he's giving them a little update here and there. And, Lord, she done named Candy something else because I... She named a KMZ for TMZ, you know, being a spokesperson of everybody's business. And she's the outlet of where you need to go to get your correct news. But Eva is, you know, throwing salt on her. But she says Candy is throwing salt on her. So she done nicknamed her Salty Baby, okay? And um, she said Candy has went from a 10 to 2, I guess, in her book. Because usually, you know, they said 2 to 10 or that person is on 10, man, they're doing the very, very most. And pretty much that's what she's saying of her so-called colleague, Candy Burris, okay? Now, in any other time, they're sitting there kiki and hollering and carrying on because it is her and Cynthia. Because that's the one nucleus that seems like uh, Eva have and... Uh, well, I guess Cynthia's kind of the nucleus because she's pretty much filming with everybody. So she don't have a problem with nobody. And she really don't have a problem with Nene. They're just trying to make it seem like she has a problem because she really wants to be in friends, back in friends with Nene. She don't want to be Nene foe, but it just is what it is. Okay, they're both in the same age group. So I can kind of understand the camaraderie that they would have a lot more in common than uh, Cynthia trying to hang out all the time with Candy and Portia and Kenya, okay? Because they are a lot younger than her. So, um, Eva goes to talk about Candy like she's a class A instigator. You know, just putting all kind of negativity on Candy's name and what she go and how she performs in that little circle. You know, she don't know how to just 
be a privy of information, but don't take it nowhere. But since all the information was pretty much uh, talking about Kenya and uh, Tanya and Portia and all this kind of stuff, she felt that uh, Candy should have kept her mouth closed. But see, they're using Candy this season as well as last season as the bone collector. She So she got to be like sit cool, calm and collected and try to get all her information. But in essence, she's still looking like a fool like that. Told messages back to Kenya. You know what I'm saying? And then that gives Kenya a better storyline to go in and try to get somebody together. And then when it all plays back, the uh, common denominator in the situation is Candy Burris. Okay? Being foul as well as uh, just being insensitive to certain things. Because like I said, or I didn't say, but I'm getting up to it. She had privy information from what, Ken, from what Kenya and Cynthia had told her about what they heard about the cookie lady. Now, when Tanya was sitting up there in this little section, when the girls called themselves going to have a spa day or whatnot, they asked Candy, did she know anything about it? And bless the Lord, Candy said they're going to lie like Yovana when they were trying to drill her about Snake Gate. Who was the snake and all like that? But Candy seemed like she's a little snake running around there now. They don't got rid of Yvonne. And now she coming up in the same scenario, different situation. But same scenario, she was privileged of some information. And she knew what somebody had said. And she took the information back to her comrades. And that's Cynthia and Kenya. And I'm like, girl, Candy, you ain't no better than Yvonne. Okay? They just tend to look at you because... You're considered, in Kenya's eyes, the one that's making all the money and making the money moves. But to me, you're looking like a fraudulent, fake, foolish, um, fuckery type of person. You know, I'm like, come on now. Girl, pick a side. I mean, you, you always say you like to, um, you don't like instigators or you don't like, um, the women, she didn't use the word bully. Oh, uh, teaming up or having a team, uh, being a part of a team or a clique, I should say. That's more accurate. Being a part of a clique and then you acting like some of the mean girls out there that just want to pounce on somebody for no reason. Or you want to allow somebody to pounce on somebody. And I'm like, girl, honey, for you to even sit there and give Kenya half the passes you done gave her, it's ridiculous. It's, it's just totally ridiculous. That's why I look at all y'all as colleagues. I don't look at y'all as friends because ain't no friends gonna be floating how y'all be floating around him because you had any salt about yourself in a firm, firm foundation of really knowing what being a friend to someone is Tanya ain't did nothing to know about on that show as of yet. Okay, now I'm not saying she may play, you know, a villain later on or, go, or take some playbooks play, take some plays out of Marlo Hampton's playbook, you know what I'm saying but basically um, she treated y'all nice uh, in the Toronto, Canada scene she was having for you all. And Candy, you said so yourself that she was very nice. So why wouldn't you pull her to a side? Just like allegedly they said that uh, Cynthia felt pretty bad about how Kenya went off on last episode saying, you know, giving the girls uh, a, a feel-see or a look-see on if your man was cheating on you, which you wanted to know. You know, that type of scenarios of questions going on. And everybody was looking like, well, damn, she ain't talking about me. Well, no, she ain't talking about me. Well, she ain't talking about me. Damn, this shit might be talking about Tanya. You know, it was just obvious, you know, obvious. Even a blind man could see where King, uh, King was going with this situation. And it kind of put Tanya in a bad light or a bad footing of feeling that her man may be cheating on her. You know, putting that out like that in the atmosphere. That just wasn't right. So, but Candy didn't say that. She played dumb while they was in that spa, you know, trying to, you know, uh, act like she ain't know them. Well, she you know good and well, she knew something. But Cynthia did the right thing. And I applaud Cynthia for that. Good job, Cynthia. Because whether or not you knew Tanya was a good person. And you knew what you had heard through uh, this lady coming out, the cookie lady saying she did this, that, and third. But like I said, I have never seen that scene before until they introduced it to us. Because when we went to that cookie shop, that was another whole scene that they were showing us. All right. But getting back to the article, because I tear it off a little bit. Um, we going back to Eve. Ain't too much to say, but we're just going to breeze through her just to give her a little shine. Because it was kind of... 
okay of what they shot for that particular scene about Marley trying to have a father in her life or a dad in her life that's there, not one that's in and out and, and if some everywhere and showing out in social media and just seeing, you know, kind of seeming like he needs some mental help. Uh, so, yes, it was nice what um, Mike did. I don't know what the residue or the rem remnants that will follow throughout this child's life as she gets a little older, as she gets to be a young adult. How's she gonna feel like her mom stripped her of her real biological dad's name instead of waiting to see how she felt about it when she got a little older, especially like in her teenage years where she's formed uh, some of the person that she's uh, wanting to be. She knows her identity of how she wants to present herself in society. And, you know, she's just growing and learning and experiencing things. So, I don't know if Eva really did a do justice by stripping her of her biological father's legacy or inheritance. Because I think um, Eva had her under her last name. You know, since they weren't married or anything. But most people put the child under their father's name, especially, or dad's name. Especially if they are willing, a willing participant of claiming that child. And at the first part of her being in the world, um, he was claiming her, the child, as his. So, we all know he's out in them streets acting real questionable, you know, for the negative. And whether he should even have visitations to see his daughter. Because he's not working on an even playing field in his mind, getting a drill. But that's something for another take or another talk or another subject. But we're not going to really dwell on him. But it was a nice moment where um, she was giving... Uh, praises to her current husband that I didn't know, and I didn't know this, y'all. I didn't know Mike was uh, adopted himself. He was an orphan and whatnot. So you know, little, I never really like putting the men in the women's uh, show anyway, because this is about women on the Real Housewives of Atlanta, and not about their men. But since Evil is making her man her storyline. We just have to talk about him a little bit. But I um, admire what he was trying to do and he accomplished. But I didn't know family could represent family. Uh, whether it's in this type of case or a civil case. I think it was a civil case. But I, I always thought that you couldn't represent somebody. If you're a professional licensed person out there and you have something that you can help within the society, which is law. I didn't know you could represent, you know... Because I thought it was a eth ethical uh, situation going on where you knew private information that the uh, prosecutor that didn't know or defendant, however, is going in that situation. But I just, I just thought that you couldn't represent your family members, but maybe you can. So I just thought that was kind of um, interesting on that tape that he was representing her. And she was trying to coax him on what not to do with the prosecutor or the other defendant's um, attorney. Don't let him, you know, win or, or, or don't let him interject what we're trying to do. I'm like, come on, evil. You can't tell that man how to run his case. But anyway, it worked out for her. She was granted uh, total custody or she had total custody of Marley anyway. And um, the name change went through. So that just gave us a little bit more insight on what she was doing because when we had heard it through social media, what she had did, and she had said her little spiel on Ricky Smiley's show, I did a video on it. A lot of people did a video on it because it just didn't seem she, like she was being genuine with the taking of uh, Kevin McCall's name off of her, uh, out of her child's life so she could know Michael Sterling. Uh, as her dad and let it be like that so we all had our opinions we still have our opinions but um basically they was just showing a little clip here and there then they show a little clip uh with <laughs> that situation where Eve got mad with Nene as far as being mic'd up when she had left the um uh, that particular episode in disarray 
and she was confused and mad and whatnot. And Mike had came back with her to the restaurant to, you know, show the ladies that she wasn't a punk and this, that, and the third. And I'm like, ain't that a pot calling the kettle black? Or when Nene want to leave, just like she left Marlo at that boat club when they was trying to have lunch. And Marlo was trying to say, Nene, you need to admit to Cynthia that you was wrong. Cynthia need to admit that she was wrong. And we basically need to squash this beef that y'all have going on. Now, Nene left, left Marlo high and dry, rode away in that little man cart like she was in Tokyo somewhere or Japan. <laughs> I'm like, girl, you on a two-wheeling bike. Okay, okay, I got you. I got you, baby. I see you. I hear you. I feel you. But, you know, she didn't want Eva to run out, and she had uh, alluded to Eva that she wasn't going to be mic'd up, which... <laughs> Only a, a producer of the show can say no. Let her have that moment to herself. It's, it's too serious. We want her to just let's just get off mic on that or go to another story line. Uh, but they didn't do that. It was supposed to be done that way. And that, like I said, Eva got mad at Nene because Nene said she wasn't gonna wear a mic and she was gonna talk to her freely. But it didn't happen that way, and that's why Nene and Eva kind of got off on the wrong footing. But um, leaving that situation. But if we go back to it, y'all remember Marley was just winking at uh, Mike. I'm like, why is he? Why is she winking at Mike? And why is Mike winking at her? You know, I don't know if that was kosher or not. It was kind of eerie. But I thought I would just touch on that one to see if y'all caught that too. I, I didn't like that. But uh, kind of like pedophilia or something. But okay. Yes, my sidebar. Then we got Candy, Marla, Portia, Tanya. They meet up at some spa. They having a little relaxation afternoon with one another, and pretty much they go into talking about the trip um, in Toronto, the ending of the trip, and Portia and Candy and Marla talk about what Kenya was trying to say. You know, she was putting all of them on the hot seat like their man was cheating on them. Of course, we knew about Portia and Dennis. We knew it wasn't too much going on with Candy. Um, it never is. I'm, and this upcoming episode, it shows that her and Todd are going to be getting into some situations for the negative. That she's trying to go back and act or something. And he's like, uh-uh, we ain't finna do that. You ain't finna have me with these two babies out here. And you going, sitting up there playing like you single and, you know, going on with your life. And then you're talking about going to be some sex scenes where it's going to be some nudity going on with another man. Ooh, he 86 that idea. They were fussing, child. I'm like, okay, okay. Now we're getting to see some of Candy's dirt. And she ain't been trying to fly under this radar by being, you know, hyped up being a bone carrier. No, we need to see some of her dirty laundry, too, okay? But anyway, it's going to be interesting. Oh, yeah, because she ain't, she ain't um, backing down and he ain't backing down either. And that's reality right there. When you got two loving couples that be in odds with a certain situation that's affecting them both and the family. Girl, please. And that's a move. Okay. But anyway, um, going back to here, you know, they was going back and forth and stuff. And uh, Portia was saying, Woo, child, you know, I, Tanya, she was talking about you, girl. Uh, what, what you got to tell us about this situation? Because you know she going to tell it. Well, she pretty much said it's something going on. And Tanya said, Honey, she might got some on me, but it's false, honey. Uh, my man ain't doing nothing. Whatever she thinks she got, she ain't got nothing. We don't talked about it. He don't pretty much say it. It's false, and I believe him. Okay, but she said I got some on her though, and everybody like, what girl? What you got on him? Especially the candy. You know she's sitting up there, knowing she ready to be. Probably got Kenya on speed dial, so she can just break the tea if she go and use the bathroom or something. Okay, cause she ain't never her little informant, and I don't even know why Candy's playing a role like that. She shouldn't put herself in the middle like that. Because, you know, she did check Kane when it came to Cynthia. But it seemed like everybody else that can't, I mean, can you get in touch uh, or in a bad temperament with or she want to try to shade somebody. She let Kenya go, wow, she don't check her friend. I'm like, no, you need to be checking her on all of them because all of y'all are just uh, constituents. Y'all are colleagues. Y'all don't really get down with each other like that. I don't care what people say because y'all wouldn't be acting the way you're acting. But anyway, then it wouldn't be a reality show. I guess y'all have to go back and forth. It's the war room. It's the war room show when it comes to Real Housewives. Now y'all got to give us what we came here for is entertainment. So y'all can keep making y'all money and doing what y'all want to do in your real lives. Okay? But anyway, um, yeah. So uh, T Tanya comes out with this scenario of hers that she got. You know, some surprises for Kenya. Kenya always like to say 
her hair is this her hair is that and we all know Kenya does have long beautiful hair however it is thin it's not volumized like this what, what Tanya uh, got going on with her hair it's not really you know very fluffy and out there so you know with extensions that can pad your hair to look a little bit more heavier thicker and fuller and I think that's what Kenya loves to have because every time you see her hair when she's out and, and dressed up to go into some type of event her hair is a little bit more thicker and fuller and her claim to fame is you just got to be uh natural with your hair you got to use great products and she's pretty much saying if you come over use her line of products your hair is going to flourish glow and, and, and look very moisturized and it's going to be so you know full and healthy and it's going to be down your back and you know people got to understand certain products just don't work for everybody you know everybody be using it and Kenya will be a zillionaire she wouldn't have to do any more ratchet shows like this she just keep making her product and just you know cashing her checks and just doing whatever she feels like she need to do you know what I'm saying so we know that's not true because every product just don't work for everybody but as you age as you get into your well some people lose their hair in their 30s or their hair starts to thin out I don't care how good you're taking care of your hair it's just hereditary you may go bald prior to you getting in your 50s and we do know with women hair it gets thinner as you age and it's just probably because the um uh, I want to not serotonin but I forgot what's the um pro proteins are not as strong in our bodies and we have to take supplements because we don't eat enough to be able to absorb all the nutrients we need for that healthy hair like botanin um uh, biotin or something like that um vitamin a d you know just every all of it really um uh, a string of slew of vitamins that you need to take just to replenish the nutrients that we you know don't get uh far as the intake of food so uh, a lot of people take a lot of vitamin something supplements to maintain now Kenya loves to have her hair full, fluffy, and it just be looking gorgeous. But she just hates to admit that sometimes, you know, to keep some of the protection uh, on her hair and not be, you know, flat ironing in a lot or having the curls all the time we had to comb through. Just the heavy maintenance that you do to your hair, that will take your hair out and it will take its toll on your hair. So at this particular set, she was wearing a wig. And she didn't want nobody to know it. And did Tanya should have came out and did what she did by exposing Kenya? Well, yes, she should have because of what Kenya did to her with trying to allude to her man was fooling around, you know, behind her back. Instead of her just giving it the benefit of the doubt and saying, Can't, you know, Tanya, this is what we heard, okay, baby? We just up there trying to have a conversation. This lady came out of nowhere and said, this dead and third about your man. You need to check it out, okay? And that's all she had to do. But Kenya was sitting up there, you know, saying this, that, and the third, and going all the way around in the circle. Tanya had gave them a nice trip to, uh, a sponsored a nice trip to Toronto, Canada, giving them that carnival experience. And then she's going to turn around and slap her in the face, uh, uh, symbolically, um, saying some horrible stuff about her man is cheating on her now you know y'all know that wasn't right that wasn't no right that wasn't in no playbook and tanya wasn't even a threat to her but she just went on did what she had to do said what she had to say and it just was just that so tanya was like feeling so, kind of salty about it so she said honey let me tell y'all can you left her wig here as well as her phone charge <laughs> I'm so how do you could have forgot about the phone charge and just said, can you left a wig in a package? And, hey, I had to open it up because if I'm taking something out the country or going back out the country, I don't want nothing to come up that I got drugs or any type of illegal paraphernalia with me because I want to get back. I got to get back to the States, okay? So, um, you know, pretty much she opened it and saw what it was. And then when King went kind of soft on her, she like, okay, I got something to help her. I'm, a, I'm, so, I'm going to embarrass her like she tried to embarrass me on TV. So, you know, everybody know King is more of that, like, don't do less to your hair and use my hair products, all natural, and you can have all your hair, honey. You ain't got to buy no wigs, no extensions, and this, that, and third. So with her exposing Kenya, that Kenya actually did have a wig that she utilized. 
And, you know, that kind of hurt King, King's feelings. She said it didn't. And other people were saying, oh, it ain't no big deal. This, that, that. Well, yes, it is a big deal because Kenya is known for saying wear healthy hair. Even when she called herself going over there messing up uh, Marlo Hampton's wig event, you know, she said, you don't need no wig. Just as long as you take care of your hair, treat your hair, moisturize your hair, and all my uh, Kenya Moore products that I produce, honey, it would do just that for you. And, you know, it, it kind of like is hypocrisy at its best because she's saying, don't do this, do this. But then you doing what you told these folks not to do, which is to wear wigs, extensions, or um, what do you call it, add-ons or whatever, clips or whatever. When you do it, you do it when you want that fullness and your hair is just really straight, bone straight, and it's not giving that fullness. I don't care what you do, how many curls you put in, it's still not really full. So, it was just like, Kenya just got exposed and she couldn't, she didn't know how to retaliate back with it and still look cool about it. She was mad as hell. So now she has, uh, we got Tanya on her radar to be lot loaded and ready to light her up the next time she see her. But, um, like I said, Candy could have cut some of that stuff out, but she didn't. She just was a little bone carrier and, and made things worse for Tanya when she do, in fact, have to come and be either slayed uh, or she slays Kenya, just depending on from what Candy had went back and told them. Um, then we found out that Cynthia basically had met off with Tanya off camera and had a little lunch with her and told her what had transpired and this, that, and the third. She probably just needed to check it out. But, um... The same thing Candy could have did, and they could have worked it out on camera, bringing that same scenario up. But, you know, both parties would have known that both parties were talked to. Because when they get together, it's going to be some ignite, igniting, okay? Some fiery explosions going on, especially from Kenya Moore. But we know, hey, Tanya can hold her own. She ain't scared of uh, Kenya at no point. And then we go to, let me see. Eva again. Eva's calling Cynthia to tell her she's in court or finding ready to go to court and you know Cynthia's being the dutiful friend that she is you know uplifting her saying we're gonna have drinks and some food and we're gonna celebrate because yes you are the perfect uh, custodian of the child and then yes she need to have your husband's last name and we just gonna be serving it up and forget about him so she was you know very good at that and and it kind of eased Eva's little uh, anxiety she was having about the whole situation because she was picking Mike up from his um, building where he works and does his um, his cases and stuff and she picked them up and they went on and did what they had to do then we go to Portia and Lauren uh, Portia and Lauren go over to see her mom, Diane, and just to catch up and let her see her baby girl. And she was talking about how Dennis, this, that, and the third. And, and I ain't no Portia mom was 61. She look good being 61, honey. She look good. But uh, they over there talking about Dennis and that and the third, this, that, and the third. And mama ain't really want to hear about them. And, you know, Lauren, she just showed her true ass. She ain't really want to talk about them, okay? But Portia like, well, nah, he wants to have a little dinner. But I'm like, no, nah, Portia, you pretty much put that stuff together and pretty much made like he had to come. It wasn't like he was like all willy-nilly. Like, yeah, let's do this. Let's get back on the right track with the fam. This, that, and the third. Yeah, you know, all that stuff. So he just agreed, but it was really Portia's idea. But she said, you know, yeah, we need to talk to Dennis because Dennis hurt me and I know he hurt y'all and did that and that. And they were like, yeah, hun, okay, if you want to be back with him, let's just talk with him one time, one time only. And uh, let him know how we didn't like what he did, this, that, and that, you know, and just move on. Then we get that situation. We got, um, let me see. In the background. Oh, we got Eva finally coming out of the building with her husband, and um, they playing some demonic music in the back. Like we were watching some kind of 
a horror movie or whatever when she was reading the little uh, custody agreement that she had won in order to get her daughter Marley's um, name changed to her husband's name and this, that, and the third. I'm like, what kind of music they they paying? It kind of turned me off of just even wanting to view her. But anyway, moving on from that situation, um, we got King and Cynd Cynthia and Candy. They meet up for lunch at a restaurant. And I don't know why uh, King was shading Candy in her outfit. Talking about she was having some post-traumatic uh, stress syndrome going on. The whole outfit she was wearing. I said, ooh, child, that's shade. I hopefully Candy will go back and, and get that confessional that uh, Kenya threw at her. Because she think Kenya like her, y'all. But Kenya's throwing shade left and right on Candy. But hopefully before the season ends, she'll see what she really just bought back which was her arch nemesis that's coming to seek and destroy her and get in her number one spot okay but anyway that's just is what it is um we got kenya she kind of mad at candy uh because candy got her crab cakes first and the waiter forgot that she wanted and she was being nice and nasty uh meaning kenya more to the waiter and stuff and i'm like girl Calm down. It, you should have ate something before you got there. It's just a drop, drop kicking that man when he's trying to make a living. He got your order, but he remember Candy said hers first. So it was for her to get hers first. All right. But anyway, she was mad about that. And I'm like, oh, you just mad because Candy got hers. I'm like, okay, girl. You ain't the queen yet. A self-appointed queen, I should say. And then we got um, Cynthia told Tanya about what she knew you know, that came up in her little side confessionals about what was going on with everything. And Ken talks about Tanya and her infertility about she dealt with and tried to help her and coach her and give her some information about infertility off camera. That was something they shared, you know, a moment she thought that was brilliant. And, you know, she was hipping her to what she had already been through and educating her and everything. And then Tanya going to talk about her and show her, you know, most kept secret that she should have kept. Uh, but it just he is what it is. I'm pretty much uh, the same way. Why you didn't ask Candy? Uh, your girl Candy to uh, get your stuff for you. But it just is what it is, all right? Uh, then we got, um, let me see. Kenya's okay, talking about the cookie lady. You know, was very nice looking. And she was definitely bad or meaning good than uh, Tanya's uh, looks and her personality. But she, I think she was really talking about Tanya's looks versus the uh, cookie lady looks. And she said the cookie lady looks, she can run circles all the way around Tanya. Tanya's not even in her lead when it comes to looks. I like, I mean, look at Kenya trying to shade somebody. You don't like Tanya because she got a man that, you know, seems like he love her when he's around her. Now, why he's been dating her for 12 years and not put a ring on it to where it's a wedding band, meaning marrying her, I do not know. Um, but it just is what it is. Um, but, you know, it seems like Candy was more approving of Kenya's bad behavior than checking her, saying, you know, girl, fall back, fall back, leave Tanya alone. She ain't doing nothing to nobody. Okay, she too nice. She don't know what no real beef is. And should she have done that? But, you know, by telling us about you left your weed, well, should you have done what you did by alluding to her husband or her future husband or her fiancé, boyfriend, however you want to look at Tanya's man, as possibly cheating on her? You know what I'm saying? You did some foul stuff, too, instead of her checking the situation she didn't check her. So I, I blame foul on both Kenya and Candy. Then we got... um. Cynthia really should have stood up as well because she met with Tanya behind closed doors and told her what was going on. So with that information, she knew she had talked with her. Cynthia should have said, well, let's, let's let it go, Cynthia. I mean, let's just let it go, Kenya. 
But I guess she was scared Kenya was going to get in her behind because she already was being rude, you know, a little bit to Cynthia when they were sitting at the table trying to talk about the situation. So, you know, it just is what it is. I just put them as three mean girls together, meaning Candy, Cynthia, and Kenya, when they're sitting there trying to talk about people. But they don't like people talking about them behind their backs, you know what I'm saying? So, um, then we got Eva. She's having a little cute party for Marley. And her celebration of her name being changed and this, that, and the third. Of course, she rides late while everybody's there, but it's befitting. She can uh, arrive fashionably late uh, to her event. It sets the tone. But um, all of them sit down and they talk about um, what ha ha happened with Eva and what she went through as far as the court proceedings with getting Marley names changed and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, then... Tanya starts to ask Candy, um, did you give uh, Kenya my package or her package? And, you know, just throwing shit, you know, but Tanya put that in real smooth. She said, yeah, I gave it to her, but she didn't like it, girl, and she's going to come for you. She didn't say that part, but she was saying, yeah, but she ain't like that part, what you were talking about, mm -hmm. her. And she was like, what? You know, um, what are you talking about or whatnot? And uh, I don't know, it was just crazy. Candy was trying to, you know, get out of it. And then you had Eva, like, what happened? What happened? What happened? So they all collectively told her what happened. And then she was like, oh, Lord. And she was very intrigued with what was going down. She was just hating she missed it as well. But moving on from that situation, we got the setting with Portia. Portia and Dennis and the whole affair being out there with uh, Dennis supposed to be um apologize and they having a nice dinner which uh pretty much uh, it looks like Portia got it from Papa John's okay and put all the little you know things accordingly into place like she was out there really slanging in that kitchen but anyway Portia didn't know until the very end that Dennis had invited his mom to the shindig and you can tell all around Portia's mannerism and her facial expression. She did not like that. It was supposed to be in a setting where they got on Dennis' ass, meaning her side of the family, Portia, mom, and her sister Lauren. And that was it. And he was going to eat crow that day. But he was like, no, nah, he thought about that situation. That's why I said that nigga, oh, excuse me, that young man is small. He ain't trying to get no uh, wedding until he get a prenup because his mom done drilled it in his ear, his head, and he knows it has to go that way or it ain't going to be no way of them getting married. So pretty much um, they were really wasn't speaking to him when they came into the house and he was noticing that. He was kind of scared at the same damn time. And then his mama finally showed up and then he was rushing to the door and he was happy to see her because at least he know he had an ally. And I was like, look at Dennis. He ain't no damn good. No damn good. Because a real man would have sat up there, had to say what he had to say, give apologies out. And he kept it moving, you know what I'm saying? But, of course, um, the mom didn't really come in and say too much. She was kind of pleasant and whatnot. But you could tell it was thick you know it was a, a division in the room and they and dennis was the corporate or the nucleus that started it all the stuff but you know moms are gonna be moms they're gonna take up for their children regardless but um lauren and diane was pretty much giving him a spill of you know you hurt her you hurt us we suffered this that and third and he's pretty much just listening he wasn't really interrupting he let all the ladies say what they had to say and then he was giving a scenario when Lauren or um, Diane was keeping his baby PJ and he was trying to check on her or talk with her you know get some daddy uh, daughter time even if they had to Skype or whatnot uh, because him and Porsche was on the outs of course she wasn't really answering his phone call but when those two ladies blocked their number he felt some kind of way for the negative about it he said y'all got my child and I needed to see my child I wanted to see my child but I couldn't call y'all because y'all had me blocked I felt some kind of way for the negative about that. And then, you know, they was trying to tell him, yeah, but we we really, Mama Diane was like, oh, we want to check him for you. <laughs> they were trying to help her child get over what he had did to her. So they were like, and it wasn't no checking, baby. It wasn't no checking. And you could tell Mama Gina, meaning Dennis' mom was over there, you know, boiling too. Like, you can't hold my baby girl, uh, granddaughter hostage just because Portia going through some shit too. But little did they know that, 
uh, Miss Gina had actually cussed him out and things of that nature about the infidelity and saying, you know, it was wrong, but, you know, when your child did something, she usually want to step in and say this, that, and the third, especially when she want to holler prenup. But with the circumstances how it was, she just told Portia, look, I'm sorry you felt this kind of way, but I didn't know how to approach you. I knew what my son had did, and I had cussed him out every day, you know, until he make things right with you. And then I didn't know if it was going to go any further than, you know, y'all just co-parenting. But I, I definitely gave him an earful, and then he admitted that his mom did get on his behind, this, that, and third. So Portia felt a little bit better about her because Portia was in the bad, negative feelings that, his mom should have checked on her. You know, she had a granddaughter and they seemed like they had a good rapport until he cheated. You know, why she didn't reach out. So with Portia knowing that she did what she had to do, it was cool. So we leave that situation. Uh, okay, ain't too much, too much to talk about. It was just bullshit all the way around with that because Dennis going to still continue to do what he wanted to do. Um, then we go to... Let me see... I guess that was it pretty much guys yep we pretty much left off on Portia trying to get in Dennis ass but it just is what it is and as far as you know you know currently we know about that incident but you know we haven't heard anything with Portia jumping off or not uh, blocking him in social media or done took off her ring so evidently she must be okay with what he did again and she's dealing with it personally so like I said I don't know because they're giving us clips with upcoming um episodes where he ain't doing nothing with her and he ain't backing down until she signed a prenup so it just is what it is okay and Portia got to work that thing out because hey the mama already done told her okay we can give him a second chance but I ain't got to lay down with him I ain't got to deal with him but that's just you baby and her sister already told her how he feel about the situation and her getting back with Dennis trying to marry him again and all of this and it just is what it is, so if it really doesn't work out, it's like they really don't care. They'll get her back to where she needs to be stable if she cracks out a little, it, you know. Cause like I said, we don't know what happened truly with the four girls that he was out with currently after, you know, being at the club or whatnot at four in the morning. You know what I'm saying? It's just not close. It's not a good look, Portia, but she said she dealing with it because she was on Watch What Happens Live. So she didn't really answer the question. She didn't really go in depth about it. She's just saying she handling it. So it is here what it is. But yeah, that's all I have for Real Housewives of Atlanta tonight. Uh, season 12, episode 12. Uh, Harry situation. Hopefully y'all enjoyed it. Get down in them comments. Tell me what y'all thought about the whole mess that was going on. Because it was just like lat The only thing I got out of that was real good was uh, the fact that Tane was trying to assert herself when it came to trying to battle uh miss kenya Moore, and i think she's a formative a formative type uh candidate that can set kenya straight you know she ain't no marlo hampton but we we giving something good on a newcomer trying to you know floss on um uh, kenya Moore because definitely she got kenya Moore when it comes to dressing all day every day and she's college educated as well. And she definitely holds herself a little bit better than Kenya Moore. Because Kenya Moore got a foul mouth to be calling herself represent uh, Miss USA. And it, it's, just, it's just crazy. You know, but don't uh, let me hold you up any longer. And as in parting, I'd like to wish you nothing but love, peace, and so. And I will see y'all next video. But don't forget to subscribe, share, and like my videos, okay? And I'll see you next video. Bye-bye.